So we did the I remember. We looked at gender, times we became clear. Men and boys, women and girls treated differently as we're coming up. We looked at class, and I apologize because I did have on my original um, computer piece where class, because of where I, we are doing this, I had class slash caste, because caste is so important in parts of the world here, whether it's India, Pakistan, etc. So I was so happy when people pointed that out to me as they were talking, because I had meant to. Oh, yes, in Africa, too. Yes, yes, yes. The caste, the caste system. So some people actually worked that when they were doing uh, their rounds. So class, caste uh, was also. And some people went and expanded a little bit to urban rule, because that was so, it, it wove itself, the things that they intersect of caste and class and region, you know, the, the thing. So, you know, you went where you needed to go. And in that, this regard, I'd like to say all of this is always, again, I repeat, to be understood. If you use it, you use it and frame it for the groups that you're working with and the context in which you are working. So then we also looked at times when you became clear people were treated differently based on race, color, ethnicity, uh, or religion. All of the things that you shared with each other can be summarized as in, in, in various ways. We call it the early messages, again, the first thoughts that we got about ourselves and about the other. Ultimately, most of that information can be translated into the prejudices and the stereotypes that we have about other people, that other people have about us, that we have, you know, hold about ourselves, uh, etc. So, all of that being said, the debriefing of this comes in the form of these questions. Uh, okay. The first one being, so all of these messages, all that information and stuff that you shared with each other, who told you so? Where did you get this from? You told your stories, but now we want to break it down in terms of deconstruct it. And the who is not just a person, but also the what and the who. So who told you so? Just shout it out. Where'd you get this stuff? Family. Who in the family? Mother, grandmother, father, grand, grandparents, uncles, aunts. Just stay with the family for a moment. No, it starts to stay with the family. So in the family, why would our grandmothers and our fathers tell us these things? Because? Tradition, say more about that. What do you mean tradition? Hold on, hold on. Okay, there's actually then a very, um, a, a pressure, in a sense, to maintain the tradition is one uh, of the things. Why else would your parents tell you so? To protect you. This is a very important piece in terms of to understand the power of the stereotypes. Because they, and, and part of what you're going to say is because they told you because they believe that it's true. But even if you didn't believe, they have the sense of the pressure that I must hold to this. And because I, that I must hold to this or I believe it, I'm telling it to you, my son, my daughter, my so forth, in order to protect you. This is how the world works, young woman. So that I want to protect you. Any other reasons why they would tell you? So they, they're passing it on. It's what they've been taught. I mean, we, we have to put that in. It's understood. We want to say it. And some would say should make, must make, if there's going to be change. And but look at that. Draw it out and do this with real, how should I say, clear, eyes that we're looking at this, no nonsense that we're looking at this, you're doing it for yourself, you're doing it because you can't stand the criticism of the, the culture saying that you have failed, so we're doing it clear-eyed and we're doing it with compassion. 
as human beings, it's hard. And at the same time, even we're doing it with compassion, doesn't mean that we're willing to let it stand the way it is. We are doing our work to help interrupt. We want to interrupt some of this. But to hold both of those things in hand, clear-eyed, no-nonsense, assessing you know, all the ways in which <coughs> You know, we can we can say people why people uh, pass this stuff on, and at the same time, where do we have some compassion too for people that get so locked in this? But part of the work that you might be doing with women is to help unlock the trap that they're in. How do we help unlock it? And, and if we could help unlock it for our parents and our family and so forth, how would we do that uh, too? Because trapped in this cycle. Let's move on. Well, I see uh, uh, four more hands, but I also want to move on. Number three. Yeah. Uh, it's more of a question, but what if they actually think that they're doing the right thing? Most what do. If, what if they actually believe that it's a question of it's right or wrong? Mm -hmm. This is what I don't think there's hardly anybody, 99% would actually be in that position. Believe that this is the right thing to do. What else am I to believe? I've been taught it. You, we're asking you, this is why I kept pushing on you to talk about your coming up years. What was it like you being formed by this? So too, when I say, who told you so? The grandmother who also got it when she was being formed. And the father who got it when he was being formed. So of course, what else am I to believe but that which I have learned, okay? And so it's, it, it, this is where, where I was calling for the compassion in terms of human beings in, must learn how to live. But the 11 year old who gets the realization that, ah, all this stuff I've been getting, I've been living a lie. <laughs> you know, and it, it captures it, but she's able to say that her grandmother couldn't at 11, her mother couldn't at 11, her father at 11. It's a new, this is the way that we are opening the world more more towards this and risking a lot when we're going against our families and against that tradition because I do believe that we are clear that this way of passing on these messages that are really stereotypes and myths and lies uh, etc cetera, et cetera, must be broken at some point let's move on and complete con uh, continue with uh, this debriefing because it's more than just the family if it were only the family, I don't know what, maybe we could have something. But who else told you so? What else? Where else? School, 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 school. And in school, let's just stay with school. In school, we got the teachers, the counselors, the classmates, the textbooks, the, the school system itself. The school system, the, the classmates. Classmates, there are, I don't know the school system here right now, but it's now, what, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Kids are coming home, maybe from school, etc. They're 5, they're 6 and, and uh, 7 years old. Already they're telling each other who to play with, who not to talk to. The girls go this way, the boys go that way, and it doesn't have to be just in this culture. In Western culture, same thing, uh, you know, it's happening. The kids are telling, they are learning already how to, to help shape the behavior so that it conforms. Now, we could throw up our hands and just, you know, sort of crawl on the rock and cry and die if we didn't know that we're doing work to interrupt that because we do have five and six and seven year olds and 11 year olds who are learning some different messages and interrupt. You know, and this, it's a long road, a long, long, long miles, 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 kilometers to go before we sleep. We've got the parents and the grandparents and the older relatives and we got the schools and the textbooks and our, and our friends, uh, even small. Who else who tell us? We say, I heard others. The church, religion, church, temple, mosque, uh, etc. As, as wonderful as, as our faith-based um, you know, lives can be, hmm? they can also carry the most horrible of the messages that really hold such rigid, rigid, structured ways of affirming some people and negating others, of valuing some and, and devaluing others, etc. All of those, we just, we get it. We get it like the air we breathe from the minute 
uh, we're like this. And so um, the religions play a huge, huge part Story in me. Storybooks, television, television oh, media, and so many things. Media, 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 media. Oh my goodness, media. Yeah, stop, stop with the media. Let's just stay with the media <laughs> for right now. Because we have to just look at not only the media as we used to know it used to be just, you know, the storytelling in the books and in the movies occasionally, but now the explosion in the modern world of media left and right from the minute our children wake up, um, you know, until they, uh, until they close their eyes. Media is coming at them and media is filled with these messages about yourself and about the other and who you are and who you should be and et cetera, et cetera. So again, the impact uh, which speaks to the power of these, of these stereotypes. Media and your state, oh, government, 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 government. In every way, say how the government, say ways in which how the government does it. Laws, laws, laws. Yeah. Not constitutional laws, yeah. Allocation of resources. Allocation of resources. So yes, government, how else government? Let's work government a little bit more. Like? Absolutely, I mean, I, I get re, the government day-to-day -day practices that we might not even see, it's out of sight, but it's their assumptions. You see, and so that informs, I don't know, how a form gets um, developed. You know, the form that you have to fill out and, and wh what it says on it and who has to, to fill it out and so forth. So it's just the intricacies of government that gets formed by, again, male, patriarchal, you know, classist, all of those kinds of notions. Yeah. So the institutionalization of a a society that is very anti-ableist, even though in terms of disability, even though we'll have these programs and this program, et cetera, et cetera, but we've grown up hearing all the language that has to do with, you know, if you are dis disabled, live with a disability, you are somehow less than, da, ba, ba, ba. all of that gets institutionalized as, as, as well as with the patriarchy. Where are we now? Here. I mean, that, that feels vague and it's very specific at the same time. All of these institutions within a given regional thing, every place that you go or that has some impact on your life in that region, governmental, uh, educational, uh, faith-based, religious, cultural, all of these institutions are, is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, all of them are carrying these messages and just showering us uh, with them. And I don't mean showering in a, in a positive way. We've got a global dynamic in terms of all of these prejudices and stereotypes and then the discriminations and systems of oppression that come with them in relationship to all of our human identities. There is no place on the globe that is exempt. Sometimes as I'm doing this work, I get so overwhelmed, it's like I just want to die. It's just like, I mean, it's, it's that so overwhelming, the notion of the seed, the seed of civilization almost. But let's make it just the seed. The seed gets planted in each culture, you know, community, et cetera, et cetera. And it is just sprouts open. You know, you see those into every institution and so forth and keeps, and keeps it going, yeah. Okay, so then we are able to see from all that we have, um, you, know, ex you know, experienced uh, in this exercise that uh, the prejudices and the stereotypes that we are taught are early messages, really become like seeds sprouting into every aspect of our attitudes and our behaviors become like the seeds sprouting into every institution within our cultures. We are going to see this depicted in the cycle of oppression that we will move on to next.